I've just bought myself a new toy, a MyScreen digital screen maker. Many of you know that I love using Thermofax screens in my work and this is just the next step and I'm very excited about using it. So I thought you might like to see me unbox it and give it its first run through. Wish me luck. It's always exciting to open a new box of goodies, even if there are a lot more bits and pieces than you're expecting. Instructions. Very important. And a pad of something. I'm not sure what. These are the double-sided tapes for sticking down the screen mesh. Cable. A nice big roll of sticky tape. Not sure why. Flower cable. And here's the little machine. Quite small, really, isn't it? Quite heavy, though. And power pack. All that. And then we've got this startup kit. These are some special instructions for using A5, which I think I'll be doing probably more than the A4. So I'll better read that carefully. Look at the screens. They look much bigger than A4 and A5 to me, but who knows? This is a plastic frame. I think that's what you use when you're actually printing. printing board that goes on the bottom oh, and I've got a sample pack of five mesh 120 mesh screens and another plastic frame to go on top I also bought some 120 mesh screen myself which should keep me going for a little while and some more plastic frames and just to be vaguely professional instead of using credit cards I've bought a couple of squeegees here's all the bits and pieces so I have to install the software and a nice big thick manual this could take me a while okay now to put it all together I'm now going to add the tape to the plastic frame so I can attach the screen mesh to it and the instructions are actually very good because they're telling me what order to tape the sides down and then when to put the film on and how to stretch it so I thought that was quite a sensible thing to do I hope I get more than one use out of this tape. It's a little bit tedious. If you're doing a lot of screens, I don't want to be doing this every time. That wasn't very good. I'm sure I'll get better at it, though. Okay, now I have to find the ends. Here we go. I think I need longer nails. And I've got five screens, meshes cut to size, so I'm going to use one of them. So much packaging with all this. 
according to the instructions. I put shiny side. There's one side that's shiny and smooth and the top is slightly rougher. Inside. Not sure I'll get better at this. Going a bit over here. And you can't cover up the holes apparently. So I just have a little bit here that I need to just cut out. like I'm about ready to go. Next you open up the software and choose the file you want. You can make it fit to page if it's too big and you can increase it or decrease it. I'm making this about a quarter of the size so I could do four on a page if I wanted to. You can also rotate it. Now I'm going to make this bigger and get two on a page. A bit bigger. The multi up allows you to duplicate next to each other or top and bottom. So I'm going to put another one at the bottom, which is the Y, and then the gap is the gap between the two screens. So you can make that as big as you want. I'm just going to do the one. Rotate it. I could even mirror image it if I wanted to. You can take it right to the edge of the screen because that's the printable area. The screen itself will have a border around it. The slice level lightens it or darkens it. I'll just leave it in the middle. This is great if you've got fine lines and big areas. And then you just hit the send image button, making sure your machine's plugged in. And then it even gives you a little video of what to do next. So I'll do that now. So I'm just going to remove these little pieces. I'm assuming they're for packing only. And you match up the arrows and slide this in and you click it onto the lugs there, there and there. And then press down the cover. whether you can see it but there's definitely the screen has burnt beautifully so now all I have to do is print how exciting I'm just going to do a piece of paper first with the printing plate that comes with the machine and here is the screen and we've got these two points so you know exactly where to connect them there's a large one and a small one and you can see that I've had to flip it over. This is the correct side for printing.
I'm using a screen printing ink, just emptying the last of a container that I've got. You can see it's quite thick and I'm just putting it in the top area. I like how it's being held down flat by the screen. Well, that's not very good, is it? But this is just my first practice piece. And now all I have to do is lift off the screen and peel off the paper, which is stuck. Well, I'm very pleased with that. Now I'll try it on some fabric. It's a bit messier. I'm just using up some leftover fabric printing paint for this, so it doesn't matter if I make a mess. I'm actually more used to using my old credit cards. I could line these up perfectly if it was something important, but this is really just a test piece. Maybe I should have done a mirror image. I think that would make a really interesting print with combining the two. I'm just going to add a bit more of the green paint again, just to get a two colour effect. Make it a bit more interesting. Usually I would be more careful lining up the screens and also leaving them to dry between colours so I don't get any ghost screens. But I was just a bit impatient today, keen to try out my new toy. I know I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. I have an interesting range of designs that you can purchase on my website. And you can also send me images to turn into screens as well. So check it out on lisawaltonartist.com. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.